Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 122 of my modded Factorio playthrough. So we should have some ore sorters here. Big things that they are. So these first four are the ones that we can do with basic crushed uh, ores. This next step requires chunks. And we're already actually doing these four in our factory. So they're all going to be functionally the same. They're just going to have different uh, different settings, just like with crushing. So this thing works at a speed of one, and four ores go in, and four ores come out. So let's see. Let's move this up a little bit. I'm just trying to think ahead here. Four go in and four go out. And on the other side, we need to pick up one from oops, the closer belt and a long-handed from the longer belt because we need to separate them. One belt's going to have sapphire, the other belt's going to have jibalite. But similar to how we did crushed stone, we notice there's an inefficiency because technically we only need yellow belts here because we only need half of each to get our full output. So instead of just having a bunch of yellow belts, if we double up, we can have a greater space efficiency. So that one is the near. Yeah, I'll make that one the long-handed and this one the regular. Doesn't really matter, but okay. So something like that. So since these also process resources at four per second, just like the crushers, we're going to need 6.6 .6 of them or seven for that seven per side. So we need additional six for here and additional six for here. So how many can we build? Doesn't look like enough. These, however, since they're so large, we do want to jam them as close as we can to each other. Just to make this as compact as possible. Because it's already larger than the other one is. Uh, I know I just kind of placed those manually, but let's see. I'm just thinking maybe we should just orient these belts in the same orientation that they're going to be on the bus. I don't think it really matters because we can just reverse it, but... You know, something like that. Luckily, we don't need any special settings. Except for those near ones there, but we already have that. Let's make a pattern to make this slightly easier. See, that is not something we need anymore. So which one is near? So that one's regular. And then near right here. Place those. We'll figure out where to do the lights in a little bit. So let's select all of that and just kind of place them down here. Probably like alternate between. Well, do we really need them top and bottom? The center might be enough. We just place them like right here and double alternating like we did with the train stations, something like that. Should be enough illumination. And then undergrounds on the last two. I 
I think that's basically everything. It's not a whole lot to it. Because all the prep work was already done. I don't think we need to test it because it's pretty straightforward of how it works. And we'll find out soon enough. Okay, let's grab a blueprint. Another consideration here is how many of these patterns do we actually need? We figured out the pattern, but we haven't figured out how many of the pattern we want for each resource. And this is actually kind of the obligatory part of the design because, well, how many belts of iron ore do we want? That's not an easy answer. <laughs> Uh, I, you could do calculations, and I've done calculations, and they're crazy, uh, but they're obligatory. You're just making up, to find out how much iron you're going to need, you need to make up other numbers to know how much iron. Now, it's possible when it comes to end game and launching rockets and science and all that, you can calculate, once your factory's built, exactly how much you need. Uh, but at this point, we really don't know. We're just, we want more. <laughs> more than we have. A lot. <laughs> but how much is that? Well, we're building about one belt's worth right now. And we use different ores at different quantities. We might be able to get... Now, it kind of depends on exactly when we upgraded our factory. We might be able to get a bit of an idea of the ratio of ores we need. Well, that's already down. We're going to have to pick up the pittance that we have left to put, fill in there. So you notice that the machine on the very back always does more processing than the machines in the front, generally, well, except for that one, I guess because it has those undergrounds. But the machine in the back here did 54,000 ore sorters, ore sortings. So how much did this one do? So we only need about a third of the amount of copper compared to iron. So that one was 20,000. Let's check our other two sorters. About 20,000, a little bit less, but let's just say 20. And this one's kind of weird but even less less so only about 10,000 on that one so what this tells us roughly is that we need three times as much iron as we need copper and three times as much iron as we need lead and we need six times as much iron as tin here now we haven't gotten into the further forms of uh, resource processing, like I mentioned. Let's see if we have access to it. I think we already did the different ways to make iron. So we're using a bunch of iron now, but you see how we could use silicon to lower our iron use, or manganese to lower our iron use. This is, it's useful for all resources, but it's especially useful for the ones you use a ton of, like iron, to lower our reliance on it. So it's not exactly uh, a fair comparison to say, at least at this stage, that we need six times as much iron as we need tin. Because that may not actually be the case later on, it's just the case now. So it's kind of obligatory. Oh yeah, that, that's disappearing fast. We'll have to get more. It's kind of an obligatory choice here. But one way to look at it is just based on the quantity of resources that we're using now. So we're using about a belt of iron right now. A red belt per second. Since we kind of use that to triple, to say we would need three belts of our basic ores, Let's just say we need three belts of iron ore with the ability to upgrade it to six if we need to. Also, 
with the patterns, I didn't mention this, I don't think, about the difference between wide and tall. Well, we go wide by leaving gaps so these machines can be placed uh, in the empty spaces, but we can also go tall if we uh, get faster machines or get faster belts that this can be extended further out to the left so it would be longer and that's another way to extend it so that's kind of an example of how the factory is both expandable wide and tall which should hopefully give us enough options to where we're not uh, completely backed against the corner all right so there is actually a decent amount of ore right here got some so we're not coming back completely empty-handed okay so let's say we need uh, three belts of iron upgradable to six later how much copper one thing we can do we can do a search here search for iron ingot to find out all the different things that iron ingots are used for so you see how we can mix it in here, then mix it with cobalt and or nickel, cobalt and chrome. So we can do the same thing by searching copper ingots to see what we would use copper ingots in. Bronze, which we're doing now and not for long. It's just the advanced version of bronze. And we're making solder. Brass we would use it for. And what's interesting, it's used in aluminum. And aluminum is a rarer uh, element, at least in Factorio, and I imagine in real life, uh, as copper is. So we would definitely want to do this, and same with silicon, really. We would want to do this version if our goal was to make aluminum. And also to make gunmetal, it's a part of it. So, although we're not using much copper now, we would probably use more in the future. So what about tin? Well, there's that bronze and solder. And brass. Alright, it's a component of titanium. Which is rare, so we definitely would want to use the tin. And the gunmetal, so less. Probably less tin than we would copper. And finally, lead. Of course, there's also, there's other things we can make out of it. These are just the uh, the ingots, because we can make, uh, I believe, anodes, which get used for things. For making acids. Or at least uh, as a, yeah, our acids would go in. So that's like the third, or the third tier. So, lead ingots. Actually, substantially less uh, use of them. But, another way to look at it is... We've got a decent amount of empty space right here anyway. How about... Three belts of iron. And then two of the rest of them. Hmm. Or let's just, since we're doing so much with iron and copper... Yeah, how about let's just for parity three of iron and three of copper and then two of lead and tin and let's just uh, hope that's enough and it's not overkill but really it's it's obligatory kind of figuring that stuff out All right, that should last a little while of course separate's gonna run low now it's amazing how it's still going it's still going, making all those belts. Unfortunately, it's going to take quite a long time for us to see the practical results of all of this uh, factory building. And then it's going to be so overkill that we might even be rebuilding the basic bus here anyway. So, yep, it's chugging away. So we're going to need to make 
three of these for iron, three for copper, which is six, and then two for lead and two for tin. So that's a total of ten. And then we'll also need to space them out, which would be um, pretty straightforward to do. We'll, we'll deal with that later, but it'll be pretty easy. So we need a total of ten of these, which makes the calculations a little easier. So I like how all that time this thing's been spending chugging away making belts, and <laughs> we basically need almost everything that it's been spending all this time making just for the patterns. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly when this stuff's going to be hooked up to the bus, since it's all delivered via train anyway. Uh, it's going to take kind of a lot of effort, so we might be delivering resources via truck for the time being. Okay, all that crafting's done. Just need to finish our resource run here. And also, probably pick up the resources necessary for a couple of train stations as well. You see, we're actually uh, collecting sulfur here. Not using it nearly as fast as we're making it, so... We have tons of capacity. Let's see, I don't think we need to drive down there to get it, so... Let's send the train over here to pick us up. I'm gonna leave all of that in there. Perfect timing. Since the train is relatively close, we can just kind of pick stuff up and carry it over. This isn't ideal as far as like loading a train evenly, but for the purposes we're doing of just transporting some resources home, this is acceptable. The train should balance out eventually. Eventually it's not going to leave the place it's mining from until it's completely full anyway, so It'll eventually balance out. We've got as much ore as we can carry. If that uh, Jivalite train remains unbalanced, one thing we can do is just uh, send it prematurely to get loaded. In fact, that's probably something we can do right now. Well, we'll have to look and see what it looks like, but I'm thinking if it's unbalanced, we can send it to get loaded before it's ready, and that should fix any unbalancing that occurred, because this isn't an ideal way of picking stuff up. Oops. Because it's supposed to be inherently balanced, and picking up random pieces from random trains is not a way of inherently balancing something, so... <laughs> There we go, those are full for now. Let's make some train stations, except not this kind. It needs to be the loading kind. And each one of these can handle six belts at a time, so... It should... Basically, we'll need one for each uh, ore type, so we'll need four total. Okay. Got the trains. I believe we have fuel on hand already. So, anything else to bring? Probably going to need uh, belts and undergrounds and things. What's in the truck? Any goodies? Hmm. Well, I guess I'll grab what I can grab. Hmm. Sure. <laughs> grab everything. Okay. That's all the time we have for today, so I'll see you at the next episode.